Hey everyone, it's Joe Lyons here from the Automator. You know, I'm talking to Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah, how do you say your last name? I always... <laughs> that would be Bias. Bias. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I see it, but it's just like I. It's just in my head. I'm it, like, does, yeah. it doesn't. It doesn't work, right? <laughs> um, speaking yeah. of which, not not that, but um, you know, and, and those of you which I've mentioned before, but you know, I I learned of, of him what was that like 10 years ago you know watching your youtube uh which is hk toots and you go right. by raptor x on that right right right, right. but yeah um uh, anyway uh so we were discussing the other day um i was working with maestri a little bit and we were chit-chatting about it and i know from talking with isaiah too this was one of our goals but we were first discussing the merits of using you know one just connecting to a database at all right so sql light and that's yeah. what we had been using for a while the problem is with SQLite, um, and we were storing it in Dropbox, and when multiple people opened the database, we were getting conflicting files. And this is, you know, right away. <laughs> as, as wonderful as SQLite <laughs> is, and being able to connect to it with with, with SQL, it's so fast. Um, but it, yeah, you 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 get these conflicting files, and it's just a pain. Um, and then that's what where we learned MySQL. Um, do you know it, it has a built-in queue? Is that right? Is that it? it manages yes. The yeah, it manages the queue. It manages it manages the 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 requests that are made uh, to the database by multiple clients, which is right. um, the the uh, this is exactly the the difference between MySQL and SQLite. Okay. Um, and actually, if you go to the web page, that's exactly what they say. Like SQLite, okay. what it is all about is for single uh, instance use. Yeah. If you really need multiple users, then don't don't use it because that's exactly the difference between them. Which which also to to, to give the pros back to SQLite, it can be just on your local computer, right? And you don't need a server, you don't need anything special. Um, it can just be running, and it's great. There's also though like the the ADO database that's built into Windows. Which no one on the planet even uses that I'm really. <laughs> so rare, but it's it's amazing it's there, right? I mean, years yeah. ago I wrote some stuff where I'm like, wait a minute, I can there's a database that I can I can use built into Windows and open like CSV files and run SQL queries on them, like and it's all built in, like this right, is just right there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, no, the thing is that um, SQLite is the the reason why it's so popular is that you can act is very small it's a very small file it's a few kilobytes right um i think a few hundred kilobytes um and you can actually use it everywhere including like android if you have an android uh if you're creating an android app you can actually just use uh, uh sqlite as the database for that app and so on so um it catched on very quickly because of the utility that it had of being very small really fast and very easy to learn because it is kind of like a subset of what you can do with the database, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then as soon as you go to the fact that I need three people accessing the same database, right? that's exactly what it's gonna break because that's not for it. That, that's exactly uh, something that they mention in their website. Like that's, ex we're not competing with MySQL. We are not competing with them because what they do is multi-client databases, which that's exactly what we're not doing, right? <laughs> so, now, um, and I was gonna throw out there too, is years ago with, with working with Mace Ruth, we'd be doing stuff and, and he was, and he still is a complete guru on using XML and he has a great XML class for reading and writing stuff. And then when we started looking at SQLite, and that's where Jean Milan actually led a, uh, he gave us a tutorial, then later he actually did a webinar on it with us. but. Uh, with, with Maestri, we did some testing and we're like, well, you know, what happens with XML, you know, with 5,000, with 10,000, with 30,000, like records and versus SQL, uh, SQLite. Um, the difference is huge. XML was great at, at the short, you know, small stuff, really fast. The structure was amazing. However, and I forget where that threshold was, but it maxed out pretty early on, right? So the, you know, the, the, how much data you're looking at in the file size or whatever, it doesn't matter, but it was still yeah, yeah. It was like, wow, okay. It, it's really cool for small light stuff, but once but you- But it is not a scalable. That, and, and that's the reason why, 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 um, yeah. why they're not used um, in, in, in specific applications. Like for example, you're not gonna see companies like Facebook, Twitter, and so on using XML for their databases. Right. It is because of the performance hit. That's exactly yeah, it, 
and one more, just to, since we're talking about storage overall, then there's the whole JSON versus XML. And I know JSON is really kind of dominant in the world. And, and it is great in that it's very tight, right? It's very compact. However, compared to XML, you don't have the structure. So when you do want to grab certain information out of it, it takes a little bit more, you know, resources because you have to kind of build the structure or search for things with this XML. Often you can go exactly to the path and get what you want. But um, again, for- mm, Yeah, well, um, yeah, the things that JSON is not built for the structure itself. Right. XML yeah. is exactly for yeah. having yeah. Uh, hierarchical things. Uh, uh, JSON is not that. JSON is actually for serializing. So having one long string that contains all the data even if it has structure, because that's one thing that people might confuse sometimes like, oh, I cannot have structure within a JSON. Yeah, you can, because one JSON object can contain multiple JSON objects inside. Right. You, can so you, can. Right. you can nest them. The only thing is that the idea of a JSON is not to have hierarchies. And that makes it so that the parser, the parser goes uh, character by character, right? right. Yeah. It, it, it does, uh, XML is not like that. So the parser right. goes character by character, and um, that makes it so that getting to one point, you have to traverse the whole JSON object to get there. Right. Uh, with with an XML, is not the same. But again, again, uh, this is something that I actually mention quite a lot because people tend to do this mistake very often. Um, man. Uh, you cannot build a house just with a hammer. You can't. You need different tools. So if you so, and that means that for different specific applications, you might use a hammer, but in some other cases, you need a saw or or you need well, you know something let else. Me, let me slightly alter what you're saying. Right. Uh, it's not that you can't do it with just one tool, but you surely should shouldn't. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? right. Uh, well, yeah, it's really the wrong thing to do, right? But you man, uh, and, and you, you, you're, you're gonna <laughs> like by using auto hotkey for everything. You know, we fall in that trap too. Well, sometimes I should use you know Python for something. You know what? And sometimes if I was if I was trying to do web scraping across things where I had a thousand different things I'm getting, you know, I probably would use Python for its multi-threading. You know, ease of multi-threading stuff, right? But uh, anyway, yeah, it, it, I, I think you're right. It's just definitely you want to have different tools in your toolbox, which is which it actually would be like, okay, you yeah. can actually cut a, 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 a wood in half with a hammer. It's right. not going to be clean, of course. Right. Yes. It's not going to be clean. It's not, it's going to take a lot right. of time, right? right. You can. <laughs> yeah, right. But that's not what you want. And in, in, right. in programming, it's mainly the same thing. So Python is a very, very, uh, I don't know, uh, 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 how do I say, flexible language. Yeah. But when it comes to hotkeys, when it comes to GUIs, right. uh, when it comes to COM objects in Windows, you're not going to have a good time. It's, how about even just connecting to Windows? I mean, that's one thing to me. With auto hotkey, I go, wow, you can integrate, you know, do stuff with the Windows API so easily. Um, or that's buildings. the thing. So, 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 so basic, the, basically, the thing is like, if you want to use Python, yeah, you can. You're going to have a hell of a lot of bad time with it, right. but you can, right? But that's not the best tool. If you want to use something for, for, for hotkeys, you want to create some hotkeys, just use auto hotkey, just put the letter A to two columns and then whatever you want to do, and then you're done. Right. <laughs> so let, let's get back into where, we're, sorry, and I, I, I took us off road there a little bit, <laughs> uh, but back to where we were going. Now we've kind of fleshed out, you know, the, the main ones of, of JSON, XML, SQLite. Now here comes my SQL where, okay, it, it does have to be on a server. Is that correct? Yes. Some sort of a server, right? It is a server at the beginning of the, the, the first installation, you're installing the server and then you can actually uh, use clients to connect yep. them. And then, so um, case in point, the other day I was working this and I'm like, hey, let's, uh, let's, let's create a database on one of my servers and just connect to it and stuff. And so 
it took us a little bit of time because mm -hmm. we had several steps to jump through. One was um, just finding like the IP address of that database was was fun, and we, we were able to look up the domain itself, and that, that pulled us that in. Okay, great. Then we had to you know get the connection string and the um, what is it called? Oh, it is. I, that's how the, it was like the version of SQL that you were not. Yeah, yeah. In the well, the 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 the, the identifier string for the SQL database. So yeah. you want to actually send a string of what type of connection you're you're doing, what the client you're actually using, and so on, so that it knows what type of commands to expect. Yeah. <laughs> then we had to um, kind of like whitelist, grant you know, create a user on that database, and then say, hey, not only is this user with this password have you know the right to access, but look up my IP address on my computer, uh, which was actually problematic because I have both a cell provider and DSL and it switches. Okay. Um, so oh, it's a little okay. more complex. Um, but once we got all those things down and then suddenly we're like, hey, we're, we're connecting to it. I'm like, oh, cool, this is, this is really cool, right? And again, it was, so for the first hand, it was like, wow, you know what? Now we can, make it easy for other people anywhere, you know, as long as they have access to the internet, to write to our data source and, and pull, you know, pull and write data to it. Like, oh, this is really cool. Um, and then I was like, hey, you know, this this whole thing I've been working on with the um, the mentorship uh, database uh, uh, tool for, for people that want to get an auto hockey mentorship, that's all stored. And that's where um, you and the, the idea The idea came from right now. Helped me right you build a view in the database and you know which you know that was loads of fun in finding it and then it's like you know navigating to it and finding it and then running it and exporting it like oh this this sucks right it's still better than what i was going to do which with the web scraping one person at a time <laughs> <laughs> and incidentally i didn't mention this to you but i was i was on a call with jean lalonde the author of qap yesterday and and he's like oh by the way I um I did it was funny because he happened to mention this and it had nothing to do with with me. He just happened, he's like, oh, and if you're interested, I can show you how to run a PHP script connecting to the my any MySQL database, you know, and extract because we were talking, we both use easy digital downloads. And he's like, here's right. how you can get your users. And I'm like, I looked at it and I'm like, well, okay, and it helped me understand this, like, you know, where do you put the PHP file? Um, and I, what I didn't realize, because I, I thought since it's on the server, it would constantly be running. And he's like, well, you put it here. When you refresh the page with your browser, it will call it, right? it'll do the query and dumps it mm -hmm. to your browser. And I'm like, right. that, okay, that, that's really cool. Right. However, you know, I was just doing, you know, I realized when, when I did the earlier stuff in the database that I can programmatically now connect to this MySQL database driving my WordPress site and rip out whatever, whatever want. you want yeah. yeah, and store it like make sure it's already had a, a class to dump it into an auto hockey object so right. i'm like this is like i was so excited <laughs> I'm like this is crazy right like, yeah exactly. I, I no longer have to, once i've configured it i no longer have to do anything online i don't even have to go to like in in, in john's and i'm not knocking his approach either right but no, it's like, no. why uh, would actually, i go to a web page and then have to grab it from the web page and still because i'm going to do something with it in auto hockey now I'm connecting to it directly. Directly. So, so, so that, that's that's where that's where the difference comes. Uh, again, it depends. If you're actually using that information on the website, yeah, the PHP, the Spot PHP, on. this sure. PHP solution is the best, yes. right? But yes. if you're not going to use that information on the website, like on the browser, then a PHP might not be your solution because you want it on your computer to use it without a hotkey. Well and not a hotkey solution is the best, right? Yeah. So. And, and I would have to navigate to that PHP file and change it there if I wanted to update it, you know, and that, it, it's not that it's hard, it's just one more level of thing you have to do, right? In now, okay. in this particular case, um, now, now that you have the class for our hotkey to connect to the database and so on, now, that actually creates a whole, it opens a door now. That right. means like, you can create a script that connects to that database and everybody just runs the script and connects to it, right? right. So for example, if you want some people to add more, uh, if they want to um, take the survey um, and instead of actually sending emails, because maybe a lot of people do not uh, check their emails right now, you just go to the forums and say, here's a little script that you can just go ahead and fill out the form 
for me. Right. Just fill it out and hit OK. I love and it. Yeah. everybody in the, in the forum, like on the help forum, whatever people get interested into, into that, copies the script, runs it, and automatically connects to your database and adds the information for you. Right. You don't have to actually do like this. Uh, you remember that you were doing this um, uh, survey yep. using a specific tool for that, which might be paid. Oh, yeah. I, case, I'm fortunate. Right. Right. In this I'm case, sure. you can literally create a GUI in AutoHot key that does exactly the same right. or better than what you were actually doing with the other tool, but then writing directly to the database. Right. You know what I mean? Like you can. Right. Just now you have the door open through this way of connecting to the database. And as it is a MySQL database, many people can do it at the same time and your data right. is not gonna get corrupted, right? right. So that is, that is one of the ways you could actually look at it. Um, and that was what got me yesterday really excited because I'm like, look, I know there's some really crappy plugins out there for WordPress that, hey, it, it's good for building it, but then getting your data out can be a pain. They don't have a way to automate exporting it. They don't have, you know, you have to manually, then you have to go to the next one and hit exporter. There's so many things, right? We could, to virtually anything in WordPress, you know, we, we could write a script to help people hit a button and go get their data. Right? And actually, like, what, what, what I would say is, is like, convert the SQL database into uh, CSV. Like, it doesn't matter what data you have. Right. I'm just going to give you a script that converts your data into a CSV file that you can actually move however you want. Now, and the, it the is thing generalized th enough so that anybody would want that because a lot of people right, want to right. just yeah. extract the data yeah. as a CSV and just put it in Excel, for example, or right. whatever. The, the one thing I, you know, that I'll, I'll say is, which I didn't love about it was, it's a, you know, it's a little complicated because the, those names of the databases aren't obvious. You know, you have to have- Oh you have to, yeah, you, know, you have they, to know. You couldn't, like, let's say client Bob comes to us and says, hey, I, I'd like you to, you know, connect to my database or I, I should, because they wouldn't even say database, right? I have a WordPress site and I have this data here. I'd like you to, you know, automate extracting it. Okay, well, we, we and the thing is, nowhere, it's, it's, it's not obvious in WordPress, like here's the name of your database. Right. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. No, and, and that's something that you will never be able to control because the problem is that the, the people who create the database stuff, they set purposely. their own names and well, they right. usually do not follow any rules. Right. Well, so, purposely, right. In some right. ways, because otherwise hackers could make it really easy to, to do stuff. I think. Right. So and and, and the other thing is that uh, there is no rules for it. And that means that every single database is unique. Right. In the sense like uh, right. that was where I was going with that. Right. right. So it's, basically, it's, it's not just the database, uh, right. but the hosting provider. You know, I mean, how the you're right, how it was built, how many tables you got to connect to this and that. That's all. It's going to take and, manual work, right? To someone yeah. who hasn't clue what they're doing to look at it. You know. However, again, it's so worth it. You know, some of these some of these are bigger companies. And they have people, you know, going in and doing these mundane processes just because the 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 tool they use, or, or is it, yeah, it's not good, <laughs> or they charge a lot, right? Some companies charge a bunch for their API access, right? right yeah. So so here you're like, yeah, I don't need that, right? I can automate, and again, it it would you agree? Like again, because it is everything we're doing, connecting the MySQL and stuff is programmatic, right? It technically is an API in the sense of we are, you know, it's not a, a web service API is what no, you know, exactly. is making available, but uh, that's what we're doing, right? I mean, the, the browser whole thing too is when you query a, a web page, your, you know, your browser sends a query to the database, which returns, right. stuff, which then gets built with HTML wrapped around it, right? We're just getting just the, exactly the data we want and then dumping it in the format we want. Like, this is why I, I was like, <laughs> so exactly. Great. This is like, oh my god, this is exactly what I need. No. Yeah. Uh, and, and if I'm not happy with it, I can tweak my SQL query a bit on my without going anywhere, right? Just make right. a little minor tweak. And that's the thing. And and, and, yeah. and, and and um one of the things um this this is actually basically the basis for some tools. I'm not sure if you haven't uh, you remember this tool that it was like the uh, MySQL DB. Uh, there was a, a, 
um, it was a tool that you could connect to a MySQL DB, right? That you could actually connect to it and see the, the table structure um, and the data and stuff, right? Basically, yeah. as, 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 as soon as you had access to this little class that connects to a MySQL database, right. you can create software like that. You can create a tool that allows you to select the, the, the IP address, the password, connect, it's going to connect, and then it's going to return this a tree view on the left that has the table structure. Yeah. So it's like the, the right. simple light database browser viewer. Right? You, you, can, you can actually create it if you want, because you now can connect. It's, it's like the viewer, but for MySQL. Right, yeah. One yeah. of those, right? So yeah. it is like you can because you are able to connect to it and actually send whatever uh, queries you want. Right. So basically, and then it is going to return you the data, right? And you're going to organize the data however you want however you see fit. And um, this is the, the, the cool thing about um, learning those type of um, new skills, because you, you got with, with uh, SQLite, right? And it was like, ah, it's working. That's what I, yeah, right? But now you've got a new door that opened and you can use that to actually create new stuff. Right. And in your case, Whatever you want to do right now is just, oh, well, I don't want to create a whole viewer. I just want to grab this information and use it for myself. But, right. you know, the doors, the, the, the thing is not limited to that. You can do whatever you want. Right. Actually. Yeah. And, and back to, let me, let me finish up on, on circling back on what you're just touching on. In, in one of my companies, we have a real estate company where we have call centers and people in the Philippines making calls for us and stuff. And they're using, uh, it's actually a, a CRM we built with AutoHotKey. Um, okay, and, okay, and we yeah. sync everything because it's in Dropbox, right? And we've actually, you know, not, I wasn't even going to go there, but Dropbox has been on its own, even on some of the computers, has just stopped syncing, you know, and like that's caused problems. But because it's SQLite, if we both open the same thing, that causes issues. But my bigger really point was having it now, granted, I already have, because I have a website, I have, and I can put up a, another MySQL database with no fees, no anything. Okay. I don't have to have people install Dropbox. I don't have to have myself if I cared to. I don't have to have like pay for Dropbox, right? Like all mm. of this stuff is suddenly gone um, and so much easier because like, hey, we just, you know, I need to whitelist their IP address. Yeah. Um, and that's really it, you know, for each one because they'll use the same user to connect with, right? It'll just be let their IP address connect to it. I could create a custom one for them. Would the well, SQL have logs of the MySQL have logs of who did what? Is that somewhere? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. So then, yeah. so then you would possibly want to have just so you can track down things, right? To better isolate it. Um, but yeah, it just it's it's no, like, yeah, yeah, you can. That's the, the that's one of the things. And second of all, with the with the IP uh, white listing, that that has to do more with the with the host um, that you're dealing with than with with the database itself. So. For the database, right. you don't need to do that. Um, the host is the one that has these restrictions that you actually have to sure. allow uh, IP addresses, um, which is a good idea, by the way. Absolutely. But, <laughs> but um, if you, for example, if you have your own server, which is simple to you, you can actually set it in a way that everybody can connect to it without having to actually add uh, Whitelisting. And actually, I think for your host, you can actually whitelist a range of, of it, IPs. You know, I couldn't, and we tried mine, but it did take the uh, the percent sign. Um, it was using database kind of like wildcards was interesting. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it, oh. We, we tried star, we tried uh, dot, neither of those were. The percent sign allowed it to open it up and be a lack of wildcard. But, um, okay. and, and we couldn't do a range. Um, at least we didn't figure it out, but maybe, maybe okay. we could but, no, um, but that that might be one of the things. But in general, um, after after you have that set up, like whatever you want, then then you can have multiple users. And actually, it is a good idea to have multiple users, um, so that if there's a specific change, you can trace it to a specific person. Right, that's what right. I so, You know, like okay, the last change was done by this particular user, so I know what happened. Right. If it is the same username and the same password, it doesn't matter who changes it. For you, it's going to be like the same person. It's not going to. It's not. It's not going to look different right. from your per perspective. And right? it's and it's a couple extra minutes at the beginning just to set it up, right? So right. Yeah. 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 Not a big deal. 
Awesome, man. Well, like I said, I just I just thought this would be a fun discussion of different ways to store data. I mean, you know, we didn't touch on like the basics of like having an any file as well, which you know, hey, the the read and write of any files is is cool. Um, or and you can use the registry too if you wanted to, you know, store it there. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, when you really start doing Uh-oh. stuff, especially when you're sharing it with other system, you know, other people are collecting data stuff. That's where having a database. That's exactly where. That's where you. Um, that's where it shines, and uh, um, it is because it you could you could um, everybody can write and read at the same time on the database, and it's not going to be corrupted easily. It's not that it's not going to happen, but they have mechanisms in place to actually queue those things and and um, manage the data in a way that it's not going to get corrupted. Um, you eliminate the problem with Dropbox automatically entirely right away you know i just thought of something else and, and and it just didn't cross my mind when like when i was at ti i when i went back in, in internet marketing that was my job was working with sql data but you know running queries just and that and um the other big advantage theoretically and correct me if i'm wrong here is uh if you have a lot of data you know hopefully the servers hosting you know your database are actually more powerful than your computer is and so this way, when you run the query, right. you know, it sends up to that server, which is is far more powerful. Instantly, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and it will, it'll, and it executes the query, returns the data. Now, granted, now you have to sacrifice the transferring of data thing, but often you want a result. You want aggregated data, not individual data. Right. right? And so right. it's a it's a much, it's kind of like the whole thing with phones too, right? The yeah. main processing isn't done on your phone on the lot. Like no, 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 no. Most of the time it's done on the, on the others server right so it is the same like in this case um what you want is that your database server is a very good server that can handle the queries and um if if you have it set up in a way that it it's scalable and most of the server provide the service providers allow you to kind of like build up you start with a hosting service with which has like a, a a computer with five gigabytes RAM and so on, whatever, but you can actually up that yeah, right. uh, at certain points. Like, like if they have this scalable solution, what happens is that if your app, if your application, if your database is getting used too much and you can see the, the usage, right? Then you can actually just up yeah. a little bit the, the, the server for, for that increase in whatever is going on, right? I, uh... I don't think we've ever discussed it. A good friend of mine, he uh, he he's programmed in Java for over twenty years, right? And then, like, boy, maybe it's like eight years ago now, he switched over to um, working, migrating companies to the cloud of like using AWS and um, okay, uh, what's the it doesn't matter, Microsoft one, um, Azure. Right? Yeah, thank you. And uh, he was. We, our kids used to skate together every Saturday morning. And so him and I would, we'd go leave the kids and we would walk and just talk. And he was telling me all this stuff of how real world time things scale, like in the cloud and using these different things. And it was insane how fast and how automatic that they, you know, they purposely create stuff to attack their own servers, to take it down, to see how long it takes the other ones to pick up. <laughs> yeah, just those those, those huge companies, right? These huge companies do do this kind of weird stuff, and especially. And I think one of the biggest um, one of the biggest topics right now are databases, because of the security and privacy of data, right, and the scalability of it. Because Facebook started as a very small company, yeah. right, and it was just information about people in one uh, university, right. Right. But as that was growing, their database had to grow with them. And right. the queries, you know how many queries are being done every single second to, to a site like Facebook? Yeah. So Google, it is Google, it's Google. really insane, right? It is something like, so and, and yet, those databases at, need yeah, to actually like, listen, handle that. Look at Google, right? And look at the two things, the volume of searches done at Google like I said, every per second, right, or per minute, and at the same time, the speed that they return your queries, like it's it is it's it's, it's, it's insane, like, right? It, but, it but really that's is. The thing. Yeah. So that's the thing. Right now, with this particular class that you just discovered, yeah. you have access to it. 
That's exactly it, right? right? Now, now you can do something similar because you can actually use a database that allow you to do that kind of stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and then there was that's we wouldn't have to go there, but talking about not no SQL databases, right? There are other ones. Search yep. one starts with an H. Remember what that one is? Um, I'm no, well, the, the most, the most, the most common on the, of, of those are uh, Mondo, MongoDB. Yeah, Mongo's a big one. There was another right. one I can't think of, but anyway, it, that was when you truly don't have structured data and things are just a, a mess. Um, <laughs> but it, it, the speed, yeah, like, the speed, cool. right? It's crazy fast. Um, anyway, right. <laughs> I, I hope you guys all enjoyed this conversation. Um, and, and again, back to with, with what was Isaiah's you know point early on was, don't don't just have a hammer. And use the hammer on everything. You know, it, you right. Know, you're you are far better off learning. You know, to kind of dive different into type stuff, of... baby step into it, learn some different things, and you don't have to have every one of these tools in your toolkit. But I I would say definitely, you know, understanding either either JSON or XML, right? Obviously, using like any files for really basic stuff, and then some sort of database, and that would depend on. Is it my doing it local or is it something that you know multiple people might be wanting to do? Okay, that's where I would decide if it's SQLite or MySQL kind of it's simple. My my, my I'm, I'm gonna close on this. It is just this my, my, my suggestion is the following. And, and, and it might be a little bit weird. People it is very difficult to do this. And every time you get a new thing to solve, like a new problem to solve. Yeah. Don't just go and try and use the tool you have. Right. Right. So, okay. I have been, for example, I have been coding a program with a SQL database. Okay. So now we're going to do a new script. Okay. So we're going to use an SQL database. No, don't do that. Just think about the problem and say like, hold on. Do I really need a SQL database? Can I do that with an ini file? Is an ini file just enough, right? right. And that will help you learn new stuff because as soon as you start every single time, whenever you're going to write something, you say, well, what's the best tool for it? Oh, I don't know that tool. Oh, let me go ahead and learn a little bit about it. Oh, it's too, it's too hard for me to learn it. Okay, so I'm going to do it with what I know at the moment, but I know that I can actually do that later. Like I know that I have that tool at my disposal. Let me see if I can learn it later on. So you can do that. And that way you build your knowledge. Yeah slowly yeah if you never try anything else new then you you know you know you get stuck in limited you know real quick backstory um you, when i was at ti this is years ago um the new version of excel came out with the ribbon and i, I used to own i hate the ribbon.com like i hate it it was it was especially their early version it, couldn't customize <laughs> it, was, the it, was, it was your site like yeah <laughs> yeah and uh i hate the ribbon.com that was a good and, one <laughs> and it was years and then actually a friend of mine there got laid off and he was like 10 years old to me and he he really let himself get dated and he couldn't find a job and it really dawned on me that like i need to you know buckle up and start getting back into excel and using the new version because i was getting dated in what i couldn't couldn't do um mm -hmm. and then i i finally you know dove into it um and and i still don't like it don't get me wrong but at least i got past it. Otherwise, you know, I could have found myself in the same boat, been, been, you know, locked down and doing stuff that no one's using anymore. And, um, it, it just limited my opportunities. So yeah. keep learning, keep doing new stuff, you know, even if you don't like it, if it's the way the world's going. <laughs> it's, it's complicated you know. and whatever, but you know what, it, the, the world never stops. Right. If you, if you take a look at how it, things were in 1990, right. And look at it now, they're, two different worlds, right? And that's going to happen again. In 50 years from now, things are not going to look like they look right now. So, And the other day in that webinar we did, we, we, you mentioned something about with GUIs and maybe because auto hockey GUIs are getting dated, right? Um, and then just, I actually released a video yesterday on, on um, doing HTML GUIs. Uh, Maester had a class and he was just showing me some stuff. And it was, you know, using HTML and CSS to create these pretty GUIs with auto hotkey. Uh, right. The thing is, of course, you have to understand like HTML and, and at least a little CSS, a tiny bit of CSS, but mostly HTML um, and some object stuff. But it opened the doors it opens was crazy, right? But it was just like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it, yeah it does. Um, the only thing is that um, if you stop at what you know, right? And 
whatever it is, for example, in this case, without a hotkey, you just have one guy coding for it, right? So you just have lexicos mainly right. doing stuff. The changes are going to come very slowly. What, like, like version two of Auto Hotkey has been in the making for about ten years now. <laughs> Maybe I don't know, like yeah, five, no. ten years, right? So yeah. it's been a long time. Why? Because it's just one guy, right? So when you have that situation, what happens to you is that you get used to that way of thinking, but the world is moving on, right? And then um, you're going to have this issue of, uh, well what we were talking about, what we were discussing, like um, the GUIs are, look a little bit dated because they're using uh, Win32, right? But take a look at that, VS Code, VS Code. You look at it, that's completely HTML and CSS. People don't realize that, but that's a Chrome window. That's a Chrome window with a lot of CSS and HTML. So that is the future, if you didn't know, right? And that is the future. It, it was the future because VS Code is already 10 years old, almost, right? So, so basically, by the time Lexicos fix, finishes version two, right? The GUIs have, will look so different right. that he will not be able to keep up with it unless he's actually predicting what is coming, right? So again, in our end, especially with this kind of things like databases, okay, where, well, you have to keep looking at what is the database that is being used? What is the thing that people are using? Uh, get to know them because when you're gonna create your tools, you need to know what is, what is the best tool available and what is coming so that when it gets here, you already have an idea of that. You don't have to master it, no. but at least have an idea, right? Yeah. <laughs> and here's the one thing I would say, not uh, it's not doesn't contradict it, but I, I would say is it doesn't, you're not saying you have to be on the cutting edge and, and just, you know learning how to work with stuff that no one has built yet, right? Like if you wanna sit back, like I did with Maestro, let him develop a class that works with the SQLite and now I can use, that's, a, that's okay, right? Right, it's, right. It's, it's, it's totally fine. It's just don't don't wall off, you know, a certain the area. The possibility of, of yeah, actually, just, uh, you know, the world changes, and man, if you don't change with it, you suddenly you're you're out there. You're behind, right? That's how it goes. All right, man. Well, it was a good talk. Enjoy this. Okay, so we'll talk next time then. Cool. All right. Cheers.